In this video, we are going to learn the approximate calculation of square root of non-perfect square numbers. Let it be your entrance exam or academic session. Whenever you are required to find the square root of any non-perfect square number up to the two significant values after decimal, you can always apply this shortcut technique. This technique I learned when I was preparing for an entrance exam. So today I'll share it with you. Okay. First of all, you need to know is what is a perfect square number. So you know that one square is one, two square is four, three square is nine, four square is 16 and so on and so on. 10 square is 100, 11 square is 121. This we already know. So these numbers that you are getting in this column, 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 80, 100, 121, 144, and so on. These are perfect square numbers. If we do their square root, or some students call it under root, if we do their square roots, we'll get natural numbers only, right? So one square root of one will be one, square root of four will be two, square root of nine will be three. Natural numbers we'll get. These numbers are called perfect squares, right? Now, what are non-perfect square numbers? Any natural number other than these numbers are called non-perfect squares. So 2, 3 is missing. So 2, 3 is non-perfect square. 5, 6, 7, 8, then 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and so on. There is a simple method, a formula. Square root of x plus y is square root x plus y upon 2 square root x. To some students, this formula may look a bit tough, but when we'll apply it, it is very simple, very handy. Square root of x plus y is under root x square root x plus y and divide by double of this term. Simple. Square root of x plus y upon double of this term, whatever this is. Now I'll take an example and you'll see how easy it is. So let us say I want to find square root of 31. Of course, 31 is not a perfect square number. 25 is a perfect square number and 36 is a perfect square number. But 31 is not a perfect square number. So what you need to do, you just see two perfect square numbers. One which is less than the given number that is 31. Right? and one perfect square number which is just greater than this number. So two perfect square numbers, one just smaller than 31 is 25, square of 5, and the other one which is just greater than 31 is 36. So two perfect square numbers we have to select. Okay, done? Right. So this root 31 can be written as root 25 that is the smaller square number plus 6. It can be written like this. Also, if you want to write, you can write it in the form of this 36. Square root of 36 minus 5. So either you do by this method or you do by this method. Only one method you choose. By both the method, you will get the same answer. Okay. So I have written it square root of 25 plus 6. What I have told you? To find the square root of a non-perfect square number, first of all, select a perfect square number which is just smaller than this number and a perfect square number which is just greater than this number, right? So if you just choose a smaller number, even then you will get the answer. If you choose a number which is just greater than this, even then you will get the answer. So I'll do by both the methods. Now root 31 can be written as root 25 plus 6, correct? Okay? Now I'll apply this formula. Here this plus minus sign shows if there is plus in the formula also you'll put plus. If there is negative in the formula also you'll put negative. So here in this case there is plus. This I'll take as x, this I'll take as y. So the formula is square root of x that is square root of 25 plus this y you see this y that is 6 divided by double of this number. So double of square root of 25. You got it? First of all, square root of this number 25 plus this y that is 6 in this case divide by twice of this number. 
right so root 25 is 5 and 6 by 2 is 3 and root 25 is 5 so 3 by 5 is 0 0.6 okay or how you can solve it so I'll be putting a series of calculation tricks here so 3 by 5 you see if I multiply this with 20 it will become 100 dividing by 100 is quite easy and if you multiply this also with 20 because to balance numerator and denominator we are multiplying by 20 so it will become 100 and this is 60 60 by 100 it will be 6 by 10 or 0 0.6 or straight straightforward also you can divide so 5 plus 0 0.6 that is the square root of 31 the answer is 5.6 and if you calculate it with a calculator it is 5.56 fairly close okay so as i said the answer will be approximately equal okay now in some cases almost up to three places it is accurate uh, i would like to solve the same question by the greater than perfect square number also so root 31 i can write it as root 36 minus 5 okay we can write it like this and now we'll apply the same formula but this time negative in between so here i've done the calculation square root of x this is x minus this y and twice of this number at the denominator okay root 36 is 6 minus 5 by 2 and root 36 is 6 6 to the 12 5 by 12 you can calculate it 5 by 12 is 0 0.4 okay 6 minus 0 0.4 will be 5.6 only so this i took an approximate value and this is 5.6 only the answer by both the methods whether we take this plus method or minus method the answer is same okay one more example we'll take uh, square root of 53 we want to find so first step is finding a perfect square which is just smaller than 53 and it is 49 right 7 square is 49 and 8 square is 64 so if we take the smaller number it is 49 if we take the larger number it is 64 okay so i'll do with 49 first so root 53 can be written as 49 plus 4 and now applying the formula under root x plus y upon twice of this x twice of the x now this is 7 cancelling this 4 with this 2 in the numerator I will get 2 and root 49 is 7 2 by 7 is 0 0.28 7 plus 0 0.28 is 7.28 which is approximately equal to the value I got with calculator okay a suggestion is there to get more accurate answer you choose out of these two numbers you choose that number which is closer to the question for example in this question 49 was closer to 53 isn't it if we compare it with the distance between 64 and 53 the difference is 11 and here the difference is 4 so, so by solving with the closer number you will get more accurate answer the difference will be slight but it will be more accurate like this time up three decimal places it was accurate isn't it so only this much of smartness is required and this formula you have to memorize to do these questions okay now try it for some four five questions bye bye